Hi, I'm Diva from Musical Hell, and I know the score. Most people are familiar with the soundtrack to Labyrinth thanks to its songs by David Bowie and the most unforgettable call and response to ever get stuck in your head at two in the morning when you're trying to sleep. But the score to its sister movie, The Dark Crystal, isn't as well known. In fact, the soundtrack was out of print for a while and only recently released on CD for the film's 25th anniversary in 2007. I've always felt this was a pity, as Dark Crystal contains some of my favorite film music and would definitely be on my list of most underrated scores. I think it deserves more attention. And what is having an internet series for if not to impose our opinions on the world? The Dark Crystal was Jim Henson's first non-Muppet feature film, and like a lot of things he did, it was insanely ambitious. Hailed as the first live-action film without any humans, which wasn't entirely accurate as there are some body doubles for the lead characters, Dark Crystal went to great lengths to build an alien world entirely out of cloth. Or felt, or whatever these things are made out of. They even invented a language for the villainous Skeksis, but the idea ended up getting scrapped when audiences found it too confusing. But it does show how committed they were to building this strange universe with its three suns and bizarre ecosystem. This world building is reflected in the score by Trevor Jones, who also wrote the underscore music for Labyrinth. His work for Dark Crystal is a lot darker and more complex, which is appropriate as this is a darker and more complex movie. The main theme motif grabs your attention right off the bat. It's haunting and majestic, almost in a John Williams kind of way, but there's something unearthly and alien about it, too. You can tell from the start that we're entering another world, and it's going to be as beautiful as it is sinister. I love when a theme tune manages to encapsulate the entire feel and mood of a movie, and I think the Dark Crystal theme does that. It's epic, mysterious, and simply stunning. Most of the Dark Crystal concerns the interplay of various races as they fight to survive in, and in some cases dominate, their world, and of course Jones develops different sounds and themes for each group. The first creatures we're introduced to are the Skeksis, the evil overlords of the world. They're corrupt, decadent, ruthless, heartless, selfish, debauched, and just plain nasty. So of course the music that represents them is dark, discordant, and sinister. The ideological opposite of the Skeksis are the Mystics, a race of gentle yet ineffectual wise men. At least I'm pretty sure they're men. How do you determine gender on something like this? And would you really want to? As you might expect, the music for the Mystics is simpler and less imposing than the themes for the Skeksis. There's something ancient, frail, and sad about this music. You can almost feel the empty futility of their lives as they go on about their daily rituals even though they've long forgotten why. The mystics are kinder than the Skeksis, but they're also weaker and more passive. Their world is a mess, and yet they must leave the saving of it in the hands of other creatures. example of the diametric opposition between the Skeksis and the Mystics occurs in the track The Funerals, a reference to the opening scenes showing the parallel deaths of the Skeksi Emperor and the Chief High Old Fart of the Mystics. It begins with a really dark, classic horror-style organ underscored with deep bass horns for the evil and decadence of the Skeksi court. A fine funeral march for an evil emperor. This immediately segues into a plaintive flute air and harp runs, as simple and humble as the previous tune was complex and oppressive. But it's also underscored with a glass harmonica sound to keep things sounding otherworldly and mysterious. 
good and evil, light and dark, deliberately poor and disgustingly rich, it's all right there. The central characters in the Dark Crystal come from an elf-like race called Gelflings. Since the Gelflings were wiped out in a near-total genocide before the events of the movie, we obviously don't see very much of their lives and culture. But the music paints them as an ethereal and probably very refined race. You know, pretty much the way elves are nearly always depicted. The main Gelfling theme comes from a song the female lead Kira sings as she and the hero Jen go on about their quest. It's a lyrical, delicate, and very sad melody, and the melancholy in it is very touching. Kira was adopted and raised by a race called the Podlings. With their round, baby-like faces and cheerful demeanor, the Podlings are the most Muppet-like of the creatures in the Dark Crystal. If Gelflings are elves, the Podlings are hobbits, earthy, friendly, and always up for a good party. And their music reflects that. It's a wild folk reel on pipes and percussion that all but demands you get up and dance to it. I'm a sucker for Celtic and world music, so it should come as no surprise that this is probably my favorite theme on the soundtrack. The track The Great Conjunction brings together most of the various motifs, the solemn main theme, the sad music of the mystics, the discordant Skeksy music, the Gelfling air, and brings them all together. And in the end, that's what this movie is all about, how dark and light are really two sides of the same coin and we can't exist without them both. It's a stirring climax for a beautiful and all too often forgotten piece of film music. If you get the chance to listen to the 25th anniversary release of the Dark Crystal soundtrack, check it out. Trust me, no earwormy call and responses will be involved. I'm Diva, I know the score, and now, so do you.